and leaders in turn are always shaping environment and society. It's a dynamic exchange. And so, um, just a quick journey through history. Uh, Hunter-gatherer society, 100,000 or so years ago where it begins, or at least that's recorded history. Hunter-gatherer teams, groups, families, tribes live in small groups of about 50 or so. Leadership is a distributed experience, right? Men and women have equal roles, guess why? It's all hands on deck, right? There's no time for hierarchy and order, it's just survival. And so, so decision-making is distributed, leadership is distributed, roles are, 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 um, uh, are gender-neutral, people do what they need to do to get by, right? This changes as we move forward in history, um, not that far forward, and so maybe 12,000, 15 to 12,000 years ago, we began to see a shift in human experience in the form of farming. Farming comes in. What starts to happen when you have farming? You have domesticated animals, you have my property versus your property, we have the season that needs to be predicted, we have sudden relationship with boundary and fixity and order and structure in a way that the hunter-gatherers simply didn't have because they just moved and responded to situations, right? So as you start having boundaries and times and seasons, now you start having a greater sense of wonder about what's it gonna take for my crops to survive? What's the mysterious power that controls the crops? There must be a what? God. And so religion starts showing up and hierarchy and chieftains and boundaries start showing up. And this lasts for a while. And then we have the emergence about four, no, more like about six or 8,000 years ago is the city-states. The city-states now have, the farming has become so centralized, people have moved into central locations, the buildings are completely fixed. So now we have governance, we have rules, we have property rights, we have all kinds of laws to protect each person from the other person. We have clearly the emergence of government, but it's in the form usually of kings and queens, right? And if you look at the ancient structures of the city-states when they came around, the two tallest buildings in every city-state is what? A palace and the church. Those are the power centers, right? As a matter of fact, if you look around most cities today, it's still the case, right? You have the churches and the, you know, so whatever the, the holy site is and whatever the house of governance is, those are the tallest. And that tells you something about the society. And so leadership now is a little more hierarchical. There are people who have the rights and the power, and there's the beginning of classes of people, not the beginning, but the, the real sort of formalization of classes of people. And so then we move, let's move quickly forward in history, only because I said the seven hours, it's really just three hours. Um, <laughs> um, industrial revolution has happened, who's the history buff here? Any ideas? 1790. 1750, so really close. Um, 1750, Industrial Revolution, 250 years ago, and um, what we have now is a real change in human experience. Mechanization and automation and the capacity to build things at scale is changing not only the way people can eat and dress and what they wear and where they live, but now we have the emergence of a new class of wealth that's not just the kings or the churches, it's now we have the, the sort of the wealthy owners, um, and we have this very strong sense of leadership as a caretaker. The, the wealthy, powerful are the ones who are the parental characters and other people are children, and they're treated as such. And now fast forward one more time, we have modern day, digital age. This, by the way, is the latest and greatest tech building. Recognize that? Apple headquarters. Yeah, that's the new Apple headquarters. I thought they'd make an apple, but they made a circle. <laughs> So the industrial, the, the industrial revolution is then surpassed by, or more recently, by the digital revolution. The digital revolution, as we call it, is not even 50 years old. It's not even 50 years old. We are living into a time that is now accelerated. By the way, at the time of the industrial revolution, around 1750, the population of humans on Earth is about 800 million people. 800 million people in 1750. We are past 7 billion 250 years later. So a lot changes, and not the least of which is the pressure that we're putting on, on, on the planet, on each other, on resources. 
But we have this digital revolution. We have the growth in, in, um, in global organizations. We have a change from leadership as a simple transactional experience, this complex, multifaceted, what do they call that? Um, matrix organizations and businesses, giant global corporations. In effect, we've arrived at a time, and why this is becoming sort of so critical is we've arrived at a time where the church is no longer the premier driver of moral authority on the planet, nor is the government. Who's driving the shaping society these days is business, commerce. That's who's driving and shaping society, driving and shaping the actual physical shape of the globe, the environment, markets, human beings, our individual sense of ideas of who we are. These are business-driven constructs in this modern age of living. And you can escape and go live in somewhere in the Amazon River in Peru and be detached from it for a while, but you can't get away from it anymore across the globe. And so we've arrived at a time, the first time in history, where the powers that shape human experience are not governed by God or by rule of law, but by commercial drive. Are you following going with that? Mm -hmm. That is a little anxiety provoking, isn't it? If you think about what's driving the great majority of our lives is, is efforts to make us into consumers and consumers and bigger and more consumption. And if we don't wake up into this consciousness, we will literally eat ourselves out of the planet, which is what we're doing. And if it's not food, it's the packaging of the food. It's the pesticides of the food. We are, we are consuming ourselves out of existence. That doesn't have to be the case. There is a way that we can wake up to that and make some choices around that. But it has changed in a fundamental way. And um, I was thinking about the, the examples of conscious leadership that may not be obvious. Remember the school shooting in Parkland, Florida? How was it? No one was that? <clears throat> so sorry, I don't remember the exact date. When was it? February. February, right? Not even a year ago. The government, in the class grasp of the NRA, did what about shooting and gun control? Yes. Sip. What did they recommend? Yes. Let's arm the teachers. Yes. Sell more guns is the fundamental answer from a commercial perspective to a social problem. The problem is we have shooting, we have depraved behavior, we have lonely, disenfranchised, detached humans that are not participating in society in a meaningful well. And what should we do? We should make more money. Are you following going with this? Sell more guns. So you know who stands up and becomes the bizarre moral voice? Dicks. Freaking sporting goods. Walmart. Where in your wildest dream would you have put Walmart and conscious leadership in the same sentence? Delta Airlines decides they're not gonna they're not gonna honor the NRA membership to get discounts on their carriers. The lieutenant governor of Georgia gets up and says, if you don't reverse your decision and don't honor the NRA, we will pull your fuel credits and it's gonna be more expensive for you to do business. What is wrong with that picture? When an organization is trying to do something right by the society and the government of Georgia penalizes them. I love what this guy says. He says, our values are not for sale. Now, is this guy like a 25 year meditator or a deep adherent of some kind of spiritual practices? No, but he is rising to the awareness that he is a shaper of society. He is the CEO of Delta Airlines and he has a moral responsibility to do something. This is a new age. This is a new time, it's a fascinating time, and those of us who are gathered, this is preaching to the choir in every way, shape, and form. But the choir needs to get louder, stronger, clearer. 